help you understand that you have an adversary that is attempting and endeavoring to steal your faith. It's like if he can steal your faith, then he can steal your eternal destination. This thing is, it, it, what, what, it, it really is a mind, mind game. It really is a war of the mind. Hey, good afternoon, Erica. How are you? I hope things are going well today and everything I'm sure went well yesterday. Welcome to Taryn Ross. Welcome, Taryn. Welcome, Emma. Emma Bodie. Welcome to Sheila Boykin. Goodwin. I'm reading the name. I know it's Sheila Goodwin. Sheila Boykin Goodwin, welcome. All right, uh, let's get going. We are still talking about spiritual maturity which is a goal that our Heavenly Father has for us as the Church of Jesus Christ, being spiritually mature Christians. Our current focus is uh, just on identifying and exposing what uh, spiritual immaturity looks like, what the spiritual immaturity look like. And so uh, we are in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to read all the way through 21 today because what I did not do is uh, read the end part of verse 21. It's always important to read uh, uh, when you're teaching, to teach in the context of that partic those particular scriptures. So uh, over the last, what was that, Friday, Thursday, I think Thursday and Friday, uh, verse 19, we said, now the works of the flesh are manifest. We're talking about works of the flesh. And remember, this is coming from um, when we were talking about being spiritual babies, being spiritual babies, and how spiritual babies are fleshly. They're fleshly. They're going to function many times, most of the time, uh, fleshly because they're spiritual babies. This is a new walk for them. This is a new lifestyle for them. This is, a, you're in a new kingdom and you're learning things and you're growing and you're maturing just like we do in our natural lives. We, we should be uh, starting off as babies in Christ and growing into mature men and women of Jesus Christ. That's what should be happening. So, uh, uh, so we're talking about the works of the flesh, which basically is living fleshly, living fleshly. But I want to make sure we understand how um, how dire this situation is of walking and living in the flesh. So let me let me get let me read these scriptures. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Here we go. About to go through about 17, um, 17 works of the flesh, 17 lifestyles of people who are fleshly, 17 lifestyles uh, of, or ways of being uh, for people who are living fleshly and as spiritually immature Christians. Number one, we went over adultery. I'm not going to go through the definition. Uh, please go back uh, last week. I think it was Thursday and Friday that we hit these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and idolatry. On Thursday and Friday, we covered those five, those five. So if you didn't see those, go back and watch those. Or if you don't remember them, go back and watch those brief teachings again. Today, we're going to talk about the next four, which are witchcraft, hatred, 
variants and emulations. What do these words mean? I mean, you've heard of witchcraft and hatred, but what is variants and emulations? Well, in order for us to know that, make sure we're not walking in the flesh and living in the flesh, living fleshly, we need to know what these things mean. So we're going to talk about those four. But then the scripture goes on and we'll finish up uh, throughout the week on wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now, here's what I want to get to real quick before we go over those four today. The end of verse 21, Paul says this. Of the which, of the which, he's talking about these 17 works of, works of the flesh. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. Listen to this, y'all. Now, you got to hear this and we got to get this. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that's, that is, that's a warning. He, he's saying that people that live this way and that do not turn from living this way, especially, watch this, especially when we not now know uh, what these are, now we have knowledge of. See, whenever we get knowledge of something, ladies and gentlemen, here's what happens. The Lord has, has shed light upon that and we are required to live according to the light that we have, right? So when you get knowledge of something, you are now automatically, before God, responsible because you know. I hear some people saying, let me shut it off now. I don't want to know no more. No, that's not the, that's not the answer. The answer is to know and to be a, in, knowledge, uh, in knowledge of so that you have understanding and that you can live the way you're supposed to live. So uh, what is this saying, though? Let me read that again. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, they that they that they which do such things, what things living according to these 17, one or two or three or all 17 works of the flesh, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What is this saying? No person. Here is the here is the key word. Y'all hear me on this because this we, we, we've got um, I, this is so important. The key word, no person who lives in these sins, lives in these sins. Now, it does not say no person who commits this sin because we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who, who, uh, who stands uh, as our mediator that when we commit sins, that we are able to do what? Confess them to God and repent of them. No one who lives in these sins, in other words, Someone who has made the choice to stay in these sins. You're living in it. You're living in it. And so here's what happens. As long as you have breath in your body, if you're living in it, these sins, you have the opportunity to confess it. But what we don't want to do is die in these sins. You don't want to die in the midst of living in these sins. <laughs> That's what we don't want to happen. Because he says, those that are uh, that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, someone may say, well, what about grace? Grace is extended. But you got to go back to Romans chapter 6. Paul, Paul uh, 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 just masterfully he explains grace, even in, in the book of Galatians, he explains grace. But in Romans 6, he said, now, just because we have grace, does that mean we shall continue to sin? And then the very next words he says is, God forbid. No, just because you have, just because you've received the grace of God and God has extended his grace does not mean now that we can live in sin. The book of Romans is, is specifically, Romans? Yeah, the book of Romans is specifically talking about that. I believe the book of Galatians as well is specifically talking about that. Just because we have grace does not mean that, oh, okay, woo, I can do, I can live how I want. God understands. No, absolutely not. And don't believe that lie because Paul says it right here. No person who lives in these sins 
will ever inherit the kingdom of God unless they confess them and put them out of their lives. What does it mean to confess? It means that you acknowledge to God, I've been living this way. What does it mean to put them out of your life? It means repentance. Repentance. What did John the Baptist come preaching? Repentance. What did Jesus come preaching? Repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What did Paul preach? Repentance. The whole New Testament is about repentance. It's talking about changing our mind uh, once we get light and knowledge of the sin that we have been living in, then we renew our minds to the fact, I don't want to live this way anymore. Father, I confess it. I acknowledge it as sin in my life. I am, I am changing the way that I think towards it. No more. As the book of Psalms says, to love the Lord and hate sin. Love the Lord and hate sin. So I wanted to make sure we hit that last part. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read the last part of verse 21 for all of the rest of the works of the flesh. I said it started off that way, but hey, I didn't. So I'm going to pick up from here because we need to understand this is not to be a lifestyle. These are things, we do not want this to be a lifestyle. A lifestyle. No, 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 no. Okay. What is witchcraft? Let me read the definition of witchcraft. Witchcraft, sorcery. And these definitions that I'm reading are the Greek definitions. These are, these are the Greek translations of what these mean. So I'm not just reading this out of the Webster's Dictionary. This is what, what, is, meant, what is meant by it from the Greek translation of the Bible, of the New Testament. So, uh, witchcraft means sorcery, the practice of, re practice of reality with evil spirits, magical incantations, casting spells and charms upon one by means of drugs and potions of various kinds. We're talking about witchcraft. Enchantments that are used to inflict evil, hatred, sufferings, and death. Enchantments which, that are used to inflict evil, pains, hatred, sufferings, and death, or enchantments to bring good, uh, good health, love, and other blessings. See, you ever heard, now there are witches that, that say that they are good witches. Yep. There's, there is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm definitely not knowledgeable of all this stuff. Um, there is dark witchcraft, and then there like black witchcraft and white witchcraft, from my understanding. Very, very limited understanding. So they, they are witches, but they, they feel like they are good witches. And good witches still do enchantments. Enchantments for what? To bring good and health and love. Well, you may say, well, hey, that is, that's a good thing. No, 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 no. Anything coming from the source of witchcraft. Because what is the source of witchcraft going to do? Well, we're dealing with Satan. It's the source of Satan. You may say, well, Satan, he doesn't do good. Well, Satan will allow good to happen. Satan will provoke some good in order to do what? Bring people to himself. He don't care whether it's good or bad. He just wants the soul. So he'll use good. I'm, I'm a good witch. No, that's still a witch. It's still coming from the source of witchcraft, which comes from the source of demonic spirits and the kingdom of darkness. So never fall from that. Even, you know, TV shows. Remember Bewitched? She was a good witch, remember? Bewitched. I used to watch Bewitched too. I liked it. I mean, I liked the show when I was little. I didn't know what I was watching. But she was a good witch, right? On The Wizard of Oz, there's a bad witch and a good witch. The good witch, everybody loved. The bad witch, everybody hated. No, witchcraft is witchcraft, all right? So, so uh, if you know of people that are delving into witchcraft, listen. They need to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ from you, all right? And if you are partaking in it, then repent. Repent. Okay, witchcraft. Number two, our second work of the flesh for today, hatred. Now, you got to listen to hatred because hatred is what you think it is, but it is also what you might not think it is. It is what you think it is, but it is also what you might not think it is. Listen to what hatred is. 
Hatred is the bitter dislike and ill will against anyone. <laughs> bitter dislike or ill will against anyone. Hatred. That's a work of the flesh. If we're, if we're living in that, then we need to confess it and repent of it. This is also what hatred is. This is the, the under the Greek definition, check it out. The tendency to hold grudges against, against, excuse me, the tendency to hold grudges against or be angry with someone for a span of time. <laughs> now you weren't expecting that out of hatred, were you? The tendency to hold grudges against or be angry at someone that falls up under hatred and hatred falls up under murder so if we have bitter dislike and ill will against anyone you know i start thinking about holy spirit i don't know he, he gave me this this example but you know what many times i hear a lot of bitter dislike um your ch like people who did not marry their children's parent other parent baby mama baby daddy. I hate him. I hate her. Nope. Don't you can't. We, listen, we can't, we can't, we can't do this. I know, I know it feels good, but we can't do this. I know you, that, that you were mad and angry, but it also says the tendency to hold grudges against or be, be angry at someone. When we hold on to that, it is, it is, it is uh, developing a root of bitterness and unforgiveness. I hope y'all are hearing this. This is a work of the flesh. And the Bible says that we, those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God if they choose to remain in this. So we want to confess it and repent of it. Variance. What does variance mean? It means one who causes dissensions, one who causes discord or division, one who has a, is, who has a lifestyle of, uh, who lives in a lifestyle of habitual quarreling. In other words, they're argumentative all the time. That is variance. That is a work of the flesh. They're all, they always want to argue. They always want to quarrel. They always want to keep the discord going uh, instead of what? What's the opposite? How can I bring about restoration? How can I bring about reconciliation? I want to keep the grudge going. I want to keep the discord going. I'm not working towards what? Reconciliation. I'm keeping, I want to keep this, this separation. That is variance. That's a work of the flesh. That is not of God. It's not of God. It's of the flesh. It's of the kingdom of darkness. It's of the world. That's number three. This is good stuff. I know, I know it's good stuff. Because the Lord is setting us free. He's exposing light to darkness in our lives. Because this is a part of our what? Sanctification. God is sanctifying us by teaching us this so that we're like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> now I know. So I'm going to make a change. Holy Spirit, help me make the change. Because I don't want to be in this. I hate sin. I love the Lord and I hate sin. Sin is of Satan. I'm not of Satan. I'm a child of God. Sin is of darkness. I am not of darkness. I'm a child of the light. Sin is of the kingdom of darkness. I am not of the kingdom of darkness. I'm of the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Last one, what are emulations? Emulations. To emulate, emulations means, uh, I shouldn't say to emulate, but emulations means to be envious of someone because of something. To be jealous of someone because of whatever. Listen to, th listen to this, y'all. Striving to excel at the expense of another. Man, we see this all the time in our, in our country, in our work environment. Striving to excel at the expense of one another. In other, in other words, I'm using people to get to where I want to get to. Rather than genuinely and authentically loving people, I'm just using them. That's emulations. I'm using them to get where I want to get to. It also means seeking to surpass and outdo others. Where does that come from? What does that sound like? That is entrenched in our national culture. 
to seek to surpass and outdo others. We call it being competitive. We call it being competitive, but the Bible calls it emulations to seek to surpass and outdo others. In business owners, what do they do? What rather than, listen, Christian business owners, listen to this. Why do we do what we do? We do what we do as a representation of the kingdom of God. We do not do what we do as Christian business owners to surpass and outdo others. We're not in competition. That's why even as churches, we're not in competition with other churches. Are you kidding? It's crazy. That's nuts. As a business owner, if you are a Christian business owner on here today, change, if, if, that, if that change needs to be made, listen, I'm not trying to outdo the next shoe repair person because I repair shoes or, or whatever, you know. I'm not trying to outdo them. I'm just trying to do it as unto the Lord. I want to glorify God with my business, not outdo others. As a matter of fact, I, listen, if I can be a blessing to help somebody else in their business, I'm going to do it, even if they're in the same business. Why? Because I reap what I sow. I'm a child of God. Y'all, this is, yeah, we, we're tearing down the strongholds that our culture within our nation has built up today. All right. What else does emulations means? An uncurbed rivalry spirit. I just spoke on this. An uncurbed, curbed rivalry spirit in religion, business, society, and other fields of endeavor. Christian business people, Christian pastors, Christian Christians period in society, we don't do what we do to surpass and outdo other people. We do what we do as into the Lord to be a blessing to everybody we can. That's it. That's the heart of love, y'all. That's the heart of love. So those were our four for today. Those were our four for today. Our next four will be wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. We're going to cover that. When will we cover that? You might ask on Thursday, not tomorrow. I will not, we will not be meeting tomorrow at noon because we are taking our baby to college. So, um, so uh, please be prayerful, for, pray, pray over us. Uh, we'll be traveling on the road to take her to school and uh, then come back. Uh, but we won't be here tomorrow. We'll be back on Thursday with our next four works of the flesh. I love y'all. But most importantly, God loves y'all. I want y'all to have a great rest of your Tuesday. And I will see you on Thursday. God bless.